This is a joint paper I did with uh, Sean Brody, Shane Brody, sorry. The Shane is, um, I'd be the QSE part, Shane would be the techie part. So we're looking at the model view definitions because one of the things going out um, ICMS and everything else is we do need a model view definition for DCC because what you'll find is we, ha we have problems. We did a we I did a paper originally and um, a number of uh, issues came out of it why quantity spheres weren't developing their own 5D MVDs. And basically, they, because it's not mandated by the government, they're not doing anything about it. And because the public sector are doing it ad hoc, we're doing it because we have to do it, but there is no mandate to do it. And we're still only bimming up on it, if you know what I mean. So as a result of that, there, people are not engaging in it the way they ought to be engaging in it. So the roadmap, once the roadmap is rolled out properly and once the government <coughs> mandates it, then BIM will take off, then the public sector will really take off because they will have no option. But what we found was, we found there was a number of issues with it and one of them was there wasn't enough, for quantity surveyors, the problem was digitisation and BIM and they were, um, digitisation wouldn't have been the best in the public sector, as you know we, we run behind, we're, we're very conservative, we're very... Well, very conservative is the best way to do it, but we, there was uh, problems with it. We did a, um, a pest analysis on it and we looked at why would quantity surveyors not develop their own 5D QS in, MVD. MVD, by the way, is model view definition, and that really is, is where you take the information out specifically for the quantity surveyor. Now, we're looking, there is, I suppose, the challenge is one of the challenges we find with quantity surveyors is they're a conservative bunch, basically. They don't change very easily, but working now works. So there's no reason to change, it's not mandated. There's, there is just no reason for them to change in a nutshell. But other problems are, for to create such a um, model view definition, we don't have the skill set. But down the line, we will have a new set of QSs coming out. In a few years' time, we'll have very literate QSs, techie QSs coming out. So things will change when they come along. But we find that we're a very conservative bunch at the moment. But one of the problems we have, we have a number of problems basically, but I suppose one of the problems we have is the parts of the jigsaw that come together to create the perfect model view definition doesn't exist at the moment. We have issues with, um, again, with the ARM. ARM in itself is a very good document, but it is outdated at this moment in time, and it, it just needs to be updated. Now, it is not digitised, it is not machine readable, and that is an issue we have going down the line. Sorry, I need to move on with the next one. I say the mandate is a problem. Here we have uh, barriers again. People don't want to change because they don't want to change. <laughs> and you have issues with people don't QSs don't really understand what it's all about. They're not really BIM literate. In they don't they don't fully understand the whole process. The people that are out there right now, because there isn't very many courses for QSs as such. There is no QS courses that bring you up to speed as such. Then there's always the problems with the contracts. The contracts haven't been amended. Now, obviously, going down the line um, with the changing from the past 1192 to the ISO means the contracts must be amended because they use different terminology entirely. So there is no amendment to our contracts to take them in. There's no amendment now for the ISO. It will have to be amended. We have problems with protocols. We have problems with standard methods and procedures. We have problems with collaboration. We've, we've new, huge amounts of problems, and this is one of the reasons why we didn't do, uh, we didn't do a 5D, a, a model view definition for us. But what we found was, sorry, go ahead. Next. And this is us in our current situation where we have, um, we move on along because we have only a few really big players in, in the country. Ireland is a very small place and we have a few very big players and the rest of us are medium to small players and we deal with medium to small players, SMEs, we deal with the like we deal with engineers and architects of the same degree. So we don't have very many major projects. The people who have major projects are doing something about it because it's in their best interest to automate and do everything that's needed to do for speed, for accuracy, for money, for everything. So it is in their interest to do it, but generally speaking we don't have that situation. We have a situation where every time we move on, we design maybe to build. We don't design with FM in, we don't design with FM in mind. We don't design with uh, data analytics coming out the other end in mind. But now what we have to do is we have to design for BIM for FM for data analytics. In other words, 
Single source of truth is going right through the whole way, and when it comes out at the other end, we're still going to be able to use it. And the government in its mandate says we have to have a di we have two assets. We have a digital asset as well as the physical asset. So one of the things we're looking at at the moment in the hackathon and everywhere else is how can we use that data that we are now we will now have to have. And basically, what we're looking to do is we're looking to have it that it becomes it is open data, but it's open data by default. The contract says it's open data by default. From that, you take away the GDPR, you take away the commercial information, the sensitive information, but then you're left with really valuable data that's out there. So researchers. Uh, developers, anyone can use that data and get good use out of it. And the idea is for us to look at our assets as assets. <coughs> Prior to this, we would have been discipline centric. In other words, we think like quantitators, think like quantitators, and architects would. But now we're becoming asset centric. In other words, we think about the asset. It's purely about the asset. Everything's to do with the asset now. So it's the asset from inception to demolition, basically. So we go from inception to completion to operation to maintenance right down to demolition. And that's how we have to think about things moving forward. So our current situation, here, the reasons why, our current situation is why, why we don't, we didn't create a model view definition is because we have all these problems. We have ICT problems. We haven't got fully functioning integrated 5D software systems. We have caustics and qubit and things like that, but they sit outside of the actual BIM. They're not integrated into the BIM as such. We are not, like all the other designers, the other designers, they, they are a part of the design process. In other words, they're authors. But we are not authors. We sit outside of them. And we either push or pull information in. In the future, we will actually sit in them. Going forward, this is very futuristic now, we will sit within them the same way as the others. And this is the plan. The plan is to look at something like that. Again, Quantitative errors, we found quantitative errors had, um, we're a very conservative bunch, and we, don't see, we didn't see BIM as being that important because we're getting by perfectly well, but we need to change our attitude and see BIM as a value creator. Now we know the big quantitative errors, the big firms do do that, but the other guys don't, they, they don't do that. And the thing is we need to become, we need, we need to change our attitude towards BIM. We need to realise <coughs> that it is actually a value creator. And although it's going to cost, it's going to cost originally, but in the long term you get huge returns on investment. <coughs> from speed, from accuracy, from uh, skill sets, because we're losing quantitative errors. As you know, there's been a, Roshi Murphy's done a study showing that there is going to be a shortage of quantitative errors. And taking a medium shortage, you're looking at 1,650 quantitative errors that we need, we don't have. So we need those people, and we need really techie quantitative errors, which is more important. But quantitative errors also need to realise that BIM is BIM, BIM is only useful for up to 61 to 80 percent of automation. The rest of the information is unquantifiable. It's not in the BIM. You just don't get it. It's like prelims. It's outside of it. So there is. We will never get full automation. So we're waiting for this magic, you know, press button automatic, automatic quantities. It won't happen. It'll never happen. It can't happen. Purely because there are so many items outside of it that, like prelims, like risk, right, all those kind of things that we need to do ourselves. And there's lots of different other items we need to do. So one of the things is quantitative errors need to become pragmatic and realise this is what we've got. We've got a solution at the moment. It's not a great one, but it's not a bad one. We just have to keep ploughing on, make the best use of it. And we've got to realise that there's no such thing as brilliant models, not yet at the moment anyhow. There's a lot of bad models, but even bad models have good information, and you can extract information out of bad models. There is a lot of it. And it is an, it is an, an ever-evolving journey. And it is getting better, because now we're finding a lot more QSs are really getting involved in it. Previously, we were number crunchers. Like, we were not designers, so we wouldn't really talk much with the, the architects. And, you know, we had our own silo. We all have our own silo disciplines. Up till now, we were not collaboratively. We don't collaborate the same way. And you even find it in our institutions, we don't collaborate the same way. The SESI do things, the RAI do things. We need to come together a lot more and collaborate a lot more. And that's one of our problems. But we do see things happening. The ICMS is a perfect example. That's happening. All right, next one. Here is the current situation. We've tried to uh, map it out as is, and you'll see from this that we actually sit outside of the bin itself, because that's where we do sit. And here we are roughly about here. 
This is where they are. Well, we're between here and here, I suppose, that's what describe it. Well, we are moving on to the, this is the eye bin, this is where we're moving on to. And it, there's like level three, and there's level four, there's level five, there's level six, and there's level eight, even as, as we speak at this moment, being devised. Come on, next. Come on, move. Carol Key's not over Sorry? Arrow keys not working. Key no. Try that one, yeah. Nope. It was giving us problems this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about this. I'll move on. Must be a bit moving it on. I'll see you trading cats out for anytime soon. There you go. Which one? This one. That back one? Is that a back one? That we were that we were that we were. Yeah. Just that one there. Yeah. This is the model view definition. People wouldn't actually be familiar with the model view definition, but a model view definition is a subset of an overall mm -hmm. IFC schema to describe it describes a data exchange for a specific use or workflow. So while we're looking at a QS model view definition. Going forward, you would end up having a planning model view definition. So in other words, the planners get out only what the planners need. So you would have various different types of model view definitions. So while your BIM model does contain all of the information, we only want certain amounts out. We don't want the whole lot. We want what a QS needs. So this is the whole idea of creating a model view definition. And the way forward is, as you can see, it's, it's information exchange, database, with the very... Going forward, and I'm talking about futuristic now, we're not here at this at the moment. So it's the information exchange database, and you'd have the information exchange manual, <laughs> which is important. And you'd have this, between that, we would create the model view definition. So here is where we're at at the moment. We're at here, actually. Sorry, we're there. Two by three. This one is out right now. There's a DIN number four out in this, which is just half. The press is actually out this week. And this is the differences between IFC 4 and IFC 2x3. We're currently working off an IFC 2x3, but this is where we are in the IFC world. So you can imagine, kind of, looking ahead to a bright future. So this is where we are. Now, I, yeah, it is new. So again, the thing, the problem with this one is it has to be tried and tested, etc. But it's looking extremely promising. But again, it has to be tried and tested. Now, speaking of the um, ENRM, the NRM is the, um, it's the English version of the ARM, you might say. Now what they have done is, to actually map it, it's a very convoluted thing. It's quite convoluted. You really do need techie people to do that. So we've looked at doing things like that. And this is the ICMS map to the RICS NRM. So you can see the ICS is digital, it's very mappable, and it is already mapped. So the English have it sussed at the moment because they have the ICS, ICMS map to the, the NRM. Here when I talk about... Um, I'm trying to talk about t teamwork. We're not thinking that teamwork at the moment, and we're only starting to think of teamwork at the moment. Even within DCC, we're finding now we're starting to come together and we're starting to think as a collaborative team, not as individuals. I'm working off common data environments, and we're working about the asset, and it's always about the asset at the end of the day. So we're trying to come up with collaborative problem solving, which is what we didn't do before. Again, this is our arm. Now our arm, as Jerry says, is under it's under review at the moment. The reason it's not um, digitized is because if you see here, it is there is no it, it can't be coded in its present format. But it is these rules were written for a different time and they haven't been updated. They they can't be coded as is, but they are being coded obviously. So we're looking f going forward. There is problems with it, and you can see the problems with that we have with it at the moment. Like for us to create a model view definition, we have problems with arm. We have problems with the elements. They need to be adjusted. So we have a lot of problems to create, to get to the end result. There's a lot of problems in between, and this is. But they are all moving and they are all changing. That's the great thing about it. So, going forward, things are moving. So this is where we, we plan to sit next time. It's actually in there, which is in the bin model. Very futuristic, I tell it. It is futuristic, but it is possible. It is possible. So what we need to get is the arm needs to talk to the ICMS or whichever. The revised arm needs to talk to it, so the whole idea is it's all in there. So we are now an author. That's the plan. Very futuristic. This is where five to ten years, this is where we're all about the levels, the various levels. From 
get into it, when we eventually get to that one, that's Digital Britain. Digital Britain, Digital Britain is getting there. We're way over here at the moment. And this is the way forward. So there is already other levels. I know it's very futuristic, but you can see from here what can happen once we get to that level. There's a lot of stuff we can do with it, and it's really, really well worth doing. And it is in research at the moment. And this is where we're looking at, like even within DCC, we're looking at all these sort of things, carbon costing. And then we're setting up uh, areas for data analytics. It's all about the data. At the end of the day, the whole thing, everything is about the data. No matter where, you, it's all about the data. And it's all about BIM for FM, BIM for data analytics going forward. What can we use and what can we find out and what's the learnings? As you can imagine, we're a big um, organization. We have a lot of stock. So we need to know what works, what doesn't work, why it doesn't work. <laughs> And things like that. So we do the data analytics. It's time to show it. Okay. Shane, let's see.